Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is grilled chipotle flank steak with blue smoke slaw. So in February of 2018, I was invited to cook at the Food Network and Cooking Channel South Beach Wine and Food Festival. So myself and my buddy Eric Gephardt over at Kamado Joe, as well as Justin, the man behind the camera week in and week out, we went down there, we did a couple events, including the beachside barbecue hosted by Chef Michael Simon. Now out of the 40 or so chefs that were cooking that day on the beach, they selected a handful of recipes to include in the July-August issue of Food Network magazine, which was such an honor that we got chosen to be in that magazine. You gotta go check it out now. It includes the recipe that we're going to be doing today, which is the grilled flank steak, the chipotle flank steak, as well as Chef Eric's blue smoke slaw. So we're gonna start off on the slaw with this whole head of green cabbage and peel off these outer layers. And what we're going to do is core down into this and take this core out. So you're kind of aiming your knife toward the center, getting about, oh, halfway, a third, of, a third to halfway down in there. All right, so once you've made it all the way around, you've got your nice little cavity here, which we can stuff full of our garlic mixture. All right, so the tough core is gone. We've now opened this up to all of the leaves of the cabbage. So as we cook this down, as it smokes, the garlic mixture can start to seep into the head of cabbage. So here we have about a third cup of minced garlic. I'm gonna add to that a half cup of vegetable oil. And then for the seasoning, we're gonna add about three tablespoons of Arbutzer smoking Ozark heat. So just like a, a sweet barbecue rub. So we've got here our garlic paste. It's a little bit loose, but that's gonna allow it to move and season inside this head of cabbage. There we go. Now you guys have seen this blue smoke slaw on the Kamado Joe with Chef Eric Gephardt in previous video. So today we're gonna be cooking on the Yoder Smoker pellet grill. For those of you that are cooking out there on pellet grills, that way you get a feel for what you'd wanna do with your pellet grill at home. We're gonna be running this grill at 225 degrees to start the recipe off. I will place the cabbage right here on the right side over indirect heat where all the smoke can move around the chamber and get a nice color on the outside of the cabbage. We're about two hours into this cook on our cabbage now. I wanna give you guys a peek to see how it's progressing. It's looking really nice, but we wanna give it a little extra time. So we're getting a little bit of color up here. You can see we're taking on some smoke on the outside as well. I'd say we give this another hour, which is perfect because that's how long we need to marinate our flank steak. But before I get that flank steak into the marinade, I'm gonna trim it up just a little bit on the outside. So anywhere that the uh, butcher's been a little bit lazy there, we'll take care of that. Um, here on the thicker end, you're gonna find that there is some tough stuff that runs through the center, and if you try to get all of it out, you're just gonna put a hole straight through it. So I typically don't mess with that too much. Around the edges though, some excess fat, or especially really hard fat, we can take that off. Here you can see we've got some silver skin. That's really chewy, we'll wanna get rid of that. All right, not too much work to be done there. This marinade that we're using today is the Sweetwater Spice Brisket Bath, the Ancho and Chipotle. Now on top of those Ancho and Chipotle flavors, there's some really cool stuff in here like tamarind paste, a little bit of cumin, even a little cinnamon, but it's real subtle, and an apple juice base. This stuff uses both salt and acid to break down the meat, and as you can see, it's pretty thick. So we're gonna actually add about five parts water to one part of the brine concentrate. All right, so there's our five to one water to marinate or brine concentrate. We get our flank steak fully submerged, lock that plate in place on the briner bucket, and throw this in the fridge for one hour.
So let's try this again. Now we're going to start off with a cup and a half of mayonnaise for the base of this slaw dressing. I'm going to add to that three tablespoons of whole grain mustard, three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and two tablespoons of white sugar. And now for some aromatics, I'm going to add in about a half cup of green onion. Just the green parts. We'll leave the white parts behind because they are a bit more potent. Also going to add about half of a red onion. Also chopped up pretty fine. And that works out to about a cup of red onion. So we're just going to whisk it all together, combine all these ingredients. And we want to give this some time for everything to really get to know one another here in the dressing. That onion flavor is going to soak into the mayo base. So we'll give this some time in the refrigerator and store it there until we're ready to dress our slaw. Now back to our regular scheduled programming. All right, so here we are three hours in. This thing has taken on plenty of smoke. It's a little bit softened on the outside, but down here in the center, still plenty of integrity, so it'll give it some of that crunch. Smells smoky, garlicky. That's just awesome. This is ready to come off and cool down a little bit. Now at the same time, I wanna open this up for direct grilling. And we're gonna crank the temperature up to 450 degrees. Well, now the cabbage is chilling out in the fridge. The grill is coming up to temperature, so we're going to pull this flank steak out of the marinade, out of the brine bath, get some rub on it, and we'll be ready to take it over to the grill. We're just going to soak up some of this excess moisture so that our rub doesn't slide right off. We'll leave enough behind to help it attach to the meat. And the rub we're using on this flank steak is the Cattleman's Grill Smoky Chipotle. So this is a coffee-based rub. It's got coffee, a little bit of sugar in it, and of course all that earthy, smoky goodness of the chipotles. And already the aroma coming off the coffee, mixing with that hint of cumin I'm getting from the marinade is working together really nice. So we can season pretty liberally with this stuff. We brought all of our rub with us down to South Beach. We ended up cooking 300 pounds of flank steak, fed over a thousand people. It was a really incredible experience. I mean, actually cooking on the beach, toes in the sand, hanging out all day. Any of y'all that are in the area down in Florida, you gotta check it out if you haven't already. All right, just takes a few minutes to get that rub to set up. Once it looks moist on the surface, it's ready to go on the grill. I'm gonna hit our grill grates with a little duck fat. You want some sort of fat on here to prevent excessive amounts of sticking, especially with a more coarse rub. You're gonna get some sticking and that's all right, but we wanna keep as much rub on the steak as possible. So we're going over the direct flame here to try and get a little bit of color on these. Now flank steak's a fairly thin piece of meat, so for the sake of getting good color on the outside without overcooking it, I'm gonna start by cooking with the lid open, as you can see right back here behind me. When I get the color I want on there, I can close the lid down, bring the internal temperature up to about 125, which is where we're gonna finish these. Let's take a peek here. Oh yeah, we're getting some nice grill marks. I'm just gonna turn that so we get a pretty cross hatch on there. That looks good, let's flip it. There 
Very nice. So at this point, I'll close the lid up and let these come up to temperature. Now the thicker of the two has got about 10 degrees to go. We'll pull the thinner one off and start to rest it. Now I've got both those flank steaks off, they're resting. I'm gonna put together our slaw at this point, taste that dressing, make sure it's right where we want it to be, chop up our cabin and bring it all together. Look at that, stuffed all the way down there. Nice. So we're gonna incorporate that garlic into the cabbage as we get it sliced up. Just try and go nice and thin, a quarter inch or smaller. That yeah, smells incredible. So we've got all this variation in texture and flavor now. There's the smoke that's on the outside. It's all mixed together with the more firm stuff from the center that's really been seasoned with the garlic and the rub more. So we get some variety in texture and flavor. Now with the dressing, this has been sitting for a while so that all those flavors can meld together. Just want to get a taste on it, make sure it's where we want it. Mm, really nice. I don't think it needs anything added to it. I think it's right where we want it to be. Now obviously the size of cabbage can vary, so as you're adding your dressing, just go a little bit at a time. You don't want to overdress it. Just want enough to kind of coat everything. Man, it smells so good. And that looks just about right to me. Now for the flank steak. What you want to look for is the direction that those muscle fibers are running in and then slice at a 90 degree angle to that. So we cut those nice and short. Gives it the mouth feel of a very tender piece of meat. And then we're going to cut these into thin ribbons. Just like that. Beautiful. Nice and juicy. I'd venture to say the internal temperature is raised to 130 as that pink's getting pretty faint right there in the center, but we've still got just tons of juice coming out of that. Speaking of juices, you can see this is the stuff that's come out during the resting period, and you want to make sure you contain that because you can take your slices, run that back through there, and it really adds a lot of flavor, a little bit extra moisture. But that's the finished product we're looking for. Now you guys have heard me say this before, you can take a piece of meat like flank steak, and with the right preparation, it's just super tender. The marination, the way we cut it, all of that, properly cooking it, incredibly tender piece of meat. So you got that slaw base, pile your flank steak right there on top. Let those juices leak into the slaw. Perfect. Mm. Incredibly earthy. It's got just subtle heat. It's really not gonna overpower. But the coffee, the sweetness from the sugar, that caramelization that happens on the grill, those things all work really nicely together. And I think with the slaw and the creaminess, it's a great contrast. Now, one last finishing touch here. I'm going to put together a sauce, the sauce we called our South Beach sauce, which uses the Firebug Grillin' Sauce, one of my favorite sauces. A little bit of mayonnaise. It gives this an extra creaminess, sort of a decadence, really. And just a half teaspoon of fresh minced garlic and mix all of that up. Just a drizzle over the top. In case you were wondering if we're still eating barbecue, we are. Did we fancy it up a little bit? Yep. 
But if you're going to South Beach, you better be bringing your A-game. Eat steak every day. Ow! The fly just bit me on the foot. <laughs> oh. Is that a bee? Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video. And don't forget to head out and pick up that July, August issue of Food Network Magazine. If you enjoyed the recipe, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to thesauce.atbbq.com. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.